If you want to draw a creepy looking weird guy like this from your imagination, start with drawing a cute little guy like this from a photo and build on your imagination. So join me as we sketch out and learn how to draw a mouse and then make it a monster. So the first thing I found is this little guy and we're gonna kind of break him down into shapes. Let's look at, he's got a couple of ears here, and a big eyeball. Now we can exaggerate a little bit at this point. Just click his little hands over here. A little, there's a little bit of blur in this image. So not the greatest for reference, but uh, oh, look at so got kind of some angles wrong here. But let's uh, build up the back of his body, give him a little roundness. A little, little fatty bomb batty. Looks like this is coming down into the sand. And you can't see his tail really. But it looks like there's actually, it looks like it actually comes back over here. You gotta, you gotta be careful where they put that because it could might not look like a tail. So yeah, so we've got this round, kind of an oval, big eyeball. What makes them what makes this a mouse really? Let's think. You know, he got the fluffy whiskers and shade in his eye. He's got some little folds in here. The back of his this ear here. Look like this guy's a little fold over there. I sketch this through. Think about how where his fur, how his fur moves. Like those angles. If you can do a little bit of cross hatching those angles to move down. Got kind of a little, little chunk. Those are hands on here. And let's shoot this in. Okay, give them, make sure you're looking at, like I said, look, look at the way that fur kind of lays. So, because eventually, you know, I want to make this, we want to make this guy into a monster. And uh, so let's start with uh, maybe as cute as possible. So this, his eye, I've got it kind of off a little bit here. So let's make his ear a little bit bigger here. So it comes down. And then because of that, let's see, his head comes up a little bit more. Think about how dark this stuff is. His eye is really dark. all one big pupil so he can see everything he wants to this is definitely not a predator well I guess it could be and that's what we're gonna be playing off of let's think he's got looks like there's some different folds in here different kind of modeling for his fur I tell if this is his elbow coming like an elbow coming down but let's give it a little bit more shading in here I think that'll work how it how he goes, and then he's got a white front, a little shading in here, and he's got a shadow underneath. So let's take that through. Okay, and I think as far as this guy goes, this is about what we want. Really see his nose, but I would think it's a little pinkish. Give him some, change up, change it up a little bit. This is dark. It's dark coming back here by his ear and his elbow. Kind of want to get this to move through him, so let's let's give him a little bit of dark here in the front, but as a line. Well, this is a sketch. Kind of get trying to get a feel for what what his body's doing and how his body's put together. Get some separation between that tail and his, and his body. He's got this elbow and it comes down a little bit of maybe a fat fold. But kind of hard to see with this with this reference image. But not too bad. But let's come back around here too and let's give this a little bit of you know, fur. I'm kind of looking and I'm kind of 
going back and forth. I've got this image on my computer screen over my shoulder. So let's get that going. All right. There he is. I think, let's put a little bit more here. Let's give him a little bit more, more detail in this, in this ear. Now this is the kind of thing you gotta kind of decide for yourself how long you want to spend on him. And the more mice you can drop, the more mice you can draw, the better your, more the easier it's gonna to be to pull from your imagination later. This little guy, you wanna give yourself some experience in terms of you know, how these things, put this back in. Now, this, some of this is a little fake, but like I said, this is, we're trying to give, give ourselves some, uh, we're trying to give ourselves some reference for when we make it a monster. All right. I didn't time myself. Sometimes it's good to do that. But here's this little guy. And uh, let's put it, let's put a date on here. What is it today? The 28th. So let's put 3, 28. 24. I can sign it too, I guess. You know, sign it with love. Okay, cool. Now, now, real quick, I'll show you some of the benefits of of having a uh, Derwent ink tent. So this is a. Uh, uh, I always forget the names of these these pens. pens. I want to say Nigiwi. That's not right. I think it's Kurataki. So let's make sure it's. Uh, Gets, got juiced up here. And we won't do too much, because I like some of this, the way that some of this feathering looks, but I think I can make his eyeball a bit darker just by adding you know, a little water here. And so I'm just gonna think about where I want my darkest darks to be. You know, maybe the edge of his edge here. Feather some of this in the background. how his other ear looks. Give ourselves some shading. As I'm pulling this water through, I want to keep it like it's, um, I still want to move with the, move with the flow of the, of the, uh, of the hair, of his hair follicles is in terms of the, the, uh, reference image. Now uh, the nice thing about using this reference image from the United States uh, Federal uh, Federal Wildlife Service, I think that's what the USFWS stands for, um, is it's a public domain. Now, so the nice thing is, is you get some pretty cool images. They're not always the they're not always the best because the person's thinking about they're documenting the creature, the animal. And not necessarily thinking, well, if an artist wanted to use this later, what are they going to do, right? So there's another image that I think we can get a little bit more, we can get a better idea of his, this guy's little, this uh, mouse's skeletal structure from a uh, professional photographer. Now, if you're going to use a if you're going to use a professional photographer, you're going to use anybody's image. You got to make sure that um, if you're going to use it like without changing it at all, you got to make sure that that you're you know respecting their need to survive. They you know, need to, to uh, if they're doing photography to earn money. You, you do if you can I mean obviously if you know don't copy I guess that's the big thing is don't plagiarize you know these are sketches this is a sketchbook I'm not gonna be selling this but this image here right now that I'm using is uh, public domain so and I'll show you that I'll have the links to that down below so you can kind of see like I really that's all I mean these the Derwin Ink Tense pencils, man, uh, I really like it. So the cool thing, is, the really cool thing is, once this dries, we can come back into it. This kind of, you know, we can come back into it, and we, we shouldn't screw up our uh, 
my line work too much. I'm going to go over my signature just a little bit to activate it. All right, there we go. Same thing here. Okay, let's make this monster. So we know kind of, we kind of know that the mouse's head, it's got kind of a angle, but let's make it roaring. So like I said, this is one of those things, you, the more you draw, the more you can utilize your imagination. Or you can draw from your imagination, you can draw on your imagination. So, big eyes, right? Puffy, puffy cheeks, right? Think about how that goes towards the back. Let's get this in here. So, a rounded body, right? Oh, I'm gonna want to. So, one of the things about making something monstrous, like it, you could just have this be, you know, this monstrous horrible mutated mouse but I think let's go off the page whatever um, you want to kind of change its size a little bit so let's add in some stuff that I don't really have reference for so this is kind of going to be going by memory um, a little bit and um, see if we can get it to actually look sort of like what I want it to look like I'm thinking school bus. Some of my lines are kind of screwed up here. Put some dents. This arm will come down. Change where that arm is. So one of the cool things about uh, Derwent sometimes that I'll do is uh, if I got a line, it's a race out of here. Right? I just have to make sure I avoid that zone. I avoid that zone while it's wet, because otherwise the the, mark, the, pen, the pencil kind of gets goofy. So it's coming through here. Let's throw some, like what, what made it mutated? Let's put some toxic waste, you know, 55, 50 gallon drums. Maybe put some people over here. He's freaking out. These are really tiny people, so. Not much detail, but we just kind of want to get the idea. So here we can put, let's put a, a building back here, kind of in the shambles. All right. Knock, let's knock down a lamp post, and then uh, let's get back to the kind of thing. Let's make a weird, creepy tongue. Get some kind of weird growths and boils. On them. Right, and then let's give him a little, little anger, some little anger lines. He's not not a happy camper. So I got my uh, since I'm using a Derwent, this is for sketching. Let's uh, let's let's throw in some color. Right. All right. So color pencils. Uh, let's think about some some ways like where I can add some color here. Let's uh, try and make sure I put these somewhere where I'm not going to lose them all. Precarious, precarious. All right, there we go. Okay, so I don't have a good yellow. Somehow I lost my yellow in there from this batch. So let's go with. You now let's put a, put some fire. Right, I've got kind of a lemon yellow. It'll be okay for now. Cause this is a sketch. Now this is the first sketch actually, so let's make sure the you know, this is a school bus. Right. Let's, let's get some uh, a little red in there. A little red out of here. Some smoke, maybe some kind of smoke. Fire, maybe put a fire back here too, right? So I guess this is making a monster and making it kind of an illustration too. Well, let's put some, uh, 
Get some more red in those eyes, right? Red here. Get some red in that tongue. See, what can I, what else can I, well, I got, wait, I got, still got the yellow, so let's put some yellow in its fur. Just to kind of get that going. Uh, let's add some green, let's add some weird greens. Because this stuff, right? Some dark green back there. Grays. Let's get a let's get a little bit of a brown. This is a willow, so let's uh, keep thinking about how how that hair moves, right? How the hair moves around its body. This is sort of a uh, cross hatching technique here. Not really though. Just want to kind of I, I always try and try and uh, keep my uh, marks kind of moving with the flow of the creature. I think what I'll do is once this is, uh, once I kind of get this all in, sort of weird, my tail. But let's see if we got like a using fuchsia for the paint. I want his nose to be a little pinkish. Right? That look, it looked dark, but I think we'll get it washed in there. So, very rough, early stage here. I think, let's see, let's get some of this, use the side here, come in with make some of this stuff darker. Some different shadows here. Here. Back in with that willow. So let's come through it. Let's some silhouetted buildings back here. Okay, let's go through and uh, let's kind of hit, hit this with the water and uh, give ourselves some some options to pop things forward and add in some other colors too. I know I want this background kind of dark, right? Just kind of mix it in. As you can see how that really kind of knocks out that white texture of the paper, right? Back. I think the final thing for this too, I'm, I think I'm gonna go through with just a, uh, ink pen kind of pop some of this stuff get some of the details going right you know this is my sketchbook you got to be messy I think you got to be messy I want to kind of figure things this is your this is getting your ideas on the paper first steps I've been thinking about this for a week as I was kind of coming up to the filming Uh, the paper's buckling a little bit, but it's okay. Clean off the brush a little bit on some stuff. Let's get his eye kind of going. Kind of Pink nose. Yeah, we're gonna come in. I think the final step is gonna be. I'm gonna come through with the Molotov. Molotov, Mar uh, Molotov uh, black liner, is what we call them. And this is first steps, so this is, you know, I wouldn't, you know, there's nothing, uh, erase some of these, basically kind of come in here and wash out some of these motion lines that I drew. Okay, we got 
this shadow Come down. This juiced up a little bit more. This is, like I said, super rough. I think since I'm coming back with the ink, I don't know if I necessarily have to wait for it to dry completely. We'll see. Let's test that out without waiting. So this is generally real time. All right, this is a black liner. This is a 1.0 millimeter, right? 1.0 millimeter. So it's kind of thick, but you'll get the idea. All right, let's start way back here, right? Let's kind of get this to the other one. We can put in some more. Let's take it from back here. Give it some, maybe a little bit of a scaly texture here. Let's do it these. Oils. I'm kind of flushed out a little bit. Okay. I can totally remember how backs of uh, school buses are. Now we got to get some windows in there. Here, row of windows, right? We gotta get a little stop sign kind of thing. Right? This isn't precision inking. Like I said, this is kind of just to pull out some of the details of what I was what I'm thinking, so that it makes it easier to move through to. If this ever becomes a bigger piece, well, here we come, come through. Come back on this piece. Yeah. I'm kind of working fast for, for the video here. Red eyes. Come through the here. Come some extra shading. Oil on his face, too. Take his teeth. Some back, back to his mouth. So just kind of get the uh, get your ideas on the paper. Sometimes that's all you gotta do. That first step. Uh, I should be probably should be looking at my uh, reference a little bit more, but I'm not looking at it at all just because uh, time constraints. Constraints. Because this is an initial sketch, you can uh, make changes later. There's no mistakes, you're only learning from what you're doing, right? Like maybe I put the, his, his claw should probably be over here more. We kind of come through with some of, with some of this shadow zone, give it some, some texture. We'll put some more. Killing drums in here. Maybe put a person down here. All splayed out. Yeah. Whoa. Problems have happened. These people hiding behind a drum. It's pointing. Okay. 
old lamppost. I haven't looked at a new one recently. Fire hydrant back here. Building. Rubble. Got some rubble back here. Just a little darker. Pops forward a little bit more. back here. Alright. Okay, let's come through with the, uh, see if I can hit some more of these colors a little bit more. Get some darkers. Get some darker, what's this color? Yeah, let's go with, oh, it's bright blue. That's not darker. Alright, uh, let's pull back that, uh, bring back that Paint's gray. Kind of pop it in underneath here. Get a little bit more hard hard a little bit harder pressure. Alright. This one. We'll have to find this guy a little bit more. Pop forward. I'm thinking about the uh, overall design of this thing. So we got blacks coming through here. Let's, come, let's bring this shape back down here. This is the, the smoke comes up. Good. Just put in some, uh, put down that blue, put that blue stripe, just put a blue little, oh, put a little bit of sky here. All right. <clears throat> Monster out of a mouse. This, uh, this is going to work out. Ideas down, be a little bit sloppy if you want. You know, how would this refine? Would this become something new? I think. I think. Um, I was going to pull this forward and keep. You know, I was going to take this uh, creature and bring it in more. I'd want to get some good references of the uh, of the school bus. Pull some building back now. Let's knock that down. And then, uh, I think these forward, these characters that are in the foreground, I think I might exaggerate the uh, perspective a little bit more so that I can pull these characters up, right? So let's see, let's, uh, let's use a uh, evil red. Kind of tell you guys, show you guys what I'm thinking. So what I would think is, so this is the first design, but then I think what I would do is take this, maybe my, make, make my, uh, you know, bring these guys way down here so that you can actually see the characters, right? There's a guy pointing, yeah, you know, what it is it, you know. But there you go. How the mind works. All right, thanks a lot, everybody. Hope you enjoyed that. 
Uh, hey, if you've got, made it this far, please be sure to give me a like, uh, share this with your friends, and subscribe. Uh, so, and this, today's sponsor is me again. And uh, today it's the We Come in Peace coloring book that I created last year. So it's uh, full of all sorts of uh, cool little alien super monsters. Uh, it's kind of my homage to the uh, Moss Eisley Cantina aliens, or like 1950s aliens. But uh, plenty of uh, plenty of cool, creepy dudes to color. So uh, if you can, uh, you know, pick one of those up. Uh, I publish them through Amazon. Uh, if not, hey, just liking, sharing, and subscribing is 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 good enough. I really appreciate it. And I couldn't do this without you guys. And uh, thanks a lot. All right. See you next time, where we're gonna draw on your imagination, from your imagination. And if you can give somebody a reason to smile, you might just get to smile too. Thanks a lot.